I've been dealing with this since I was five years old. She survived years of abuse by a sex offender who is now in prison, but this teenager says she cannot move forward and she says local police are to blame. Her mother calls it an injustice. The Mid Hill Police Department seized $69,000 from the girl's abuser. Then they and the federal government quietly kept the cash. A judge recently ordered Mid Hill to hand over the money, though, but the police department refused. And thanks to federal law, it's all completely legal. Now, we only know about this because a family friend reached out to our Nate Morbido for help. So he asked, where's the money? It's honestly really difficult. Pain. My daughter was a victim of the most terrible crime that a child can go through. And suffering. I've obviously learned how to... I guess deal with it. This 17 year old understands no amount of money. I've been dealing with this since I was five years old and I'm almost 18. Can make up for the years of sexual abuse. She's strong. I admire her a lot. She endured in the past. My daughter was brave enough to speak up. But $69,000 would certainly help her future. I just want to move on to the next chapter of my life and that money was going to help me do it. Since the teen is a victim of a sex crime, WCNC Charlotte will protect the family's identity. I just think that this is completely unjust. Her mother knows about injustice. It's hard hearing it from my mom, especially just because of the way she does advocate for me. The mom works for an area law enforcement agency as a victim's advocate. You, you're policing for profit. Records show when the Min Hill Police Department investigated this sex abuse case in 2019, they found suspected marijuana, drug paraphernalia, and more than $69,000 in cash inside the suspect's home. The lead detective always said, yes, it's there. Money the family's attorney says an officer assured them would be available for them to pursue in a civil suit. It wasn't. How can they sleep at night? How can they say this is OK? Unbeknownst to them, investigators seized the cash and partnered with a federal agency to apply for asset forfeiture, citing probable cause of illicit drug activity. Minhill investigators never charged the suspect with any drug crimes, only sex offenses. But that didn't prevent the department from eventually collecting more than $45,000 of the seized money in 2020. The federal government received the rest, all three years before the suspect pleaded guilty to multiple sex crimes. He says, yes, we got your order, um, but the, we don't have the money. It's been forfeited. The family's attorney says the department's evidence clerk recently shared the news. Morally, it was absolutely the wrong thing to do. Only after the victim's family sued the suspect in civil court and secured a court order requiring the department to turn over the $69,000 so she can stake her claim. Somebody needs to call them out. People are going to say, this feels wrong. Don't you think so? To me, what feels wrong was that this woman was misled. By the Minhill Police Department. Well, she said she was told that. Of course, I asked. Did somebody tell this woman that they could get this money? And I'm told, no, no one would say that. Scott McGlatchey is the police department's attorney. But if she was led to believe that, I, I get it. I get she's frustrated. McGlatchey signed the paperwork. Are you all at peace with this? What I'm at peace with, and obviously I'm looking at this, you have to understand, through kind of what I would call a sterile lens. Am I at peace with it? I am at peace that we followed the law. McClatchy says police treated this forfeiture case the same as any other. He says the judge's order is non-binding for a variety of procedural reasons. We know that once it goes over to the feds, we have no further say in what they do with it. Most notably because federal court has authority over the money, not state court. I would go so far as to say I'm 100% certain that if he had known that this order for related to money that three years prior had already been forfeited by the feds, he would not have signed the order. North Carolina has some of the strongest asset forfeiture protections in the country. But by working with the feds through what's called equitable sharing, police departments can still receive money under the argument they're disrupting illegal activity. 
the standard of proof, only a preponderance of the evidence. They call it policing for profit. Do you think this is fair? I, I don't think that's a, a fair characterization. Internal records show the Min Hill Police Department alone has collected almost $900,000 through the program since 2018. It's honestly so frustrating and difficult. For this teenager, she's strong. I admire her a lot. The surprising path police chose leaves her with even more pain and suffering. And for what? Just because you can do it doesn't mean that you should do it. Records show most of the money she expected would help her start fresh. Min Hill police used instead to buy several generators. There's a bipartisan bill making its way through Congress that would end the equitable sharing program, and lawmakers could vote on it in the coming weeks. Tomorrow night at 6, why the bill's sponsor says the entire system needs to change, and why he believes this case could help make that a reality. In Min Hill, Nate Morabito, WCNC Charlotte.